I believe in choosing to forgive rather than trying to forgive. Sometimes. Everyone says it is better to forgive than forget. They say you are supposed to feel liberated, but in some cases, it can be better to forget. I have been living in an actual single parent household for five years, but I feel like I have been living with just one parent for 18. I am so blessed to have been raised under the guidance and love of my mom, and I wouldn't change a thing. But at one point in my life, I did have someone I called dad. I realized that while I called him dad then, it was because it was taught to me, expected of me. If I had then the knowledge and life experience I do now, I wouldn't have called him dad because he never really was my parent. Growing up, I have fond memories of traveling with my mom and playing with my friends. Thinking back, I have none with my dad. In the court of law, a parent is defined as one that brings forth offspring. In current society, however, it is commonly accepted that biology can have nothing to do with being a parent. A parent is a provider and a protector, a counselor and a confidant, and a teacher and a role model. The man I called my father deserves none of these titles, and thus, I feel he does not deserve to be considered my parent. At the same time, while I was left with a little bit of abandonment anxiety, I'm not angry at him, nor do I blame him. Some people were just never meant for parenting. Thus, one could ask, why don't you just forgive him if you're not mad at him? And according to Kant, forgiveness is a duty of virtue, as it is for the sake of your own moral perfection and, my personal and more unique interpretation of the definition, promotes the happiness of others. He suggests that the external actions we take have an impact on the emotions we tend to feel. While I do agree that our negative emotions toward another cause negative emotions in oneself, there are other ways to cope with those feelings rather than succumbing to forgiveness. Recalling that forgiveness, on Kant's account, is the remission of compensation or payment. In other words, when I forgive someone, I am by definition forgiving a person who has not made a full payment, material or otherwise, for his wrongdoing. And this often, if not always, means that when we forgive, we are promoting the happiness of, of a person who is not worthy of happiness. Now, of course, all of us are morally imperfect, and so in some sense unworthy of happiness. This fact alone should not keep us from adopting the happiness of others as our end, as Kant suggests. But in the case of forgiveness, the scenario is importantly different. The happiness that an offender receives from a victim's forgiveness can often be happiness that is achieved as a result of the wrongdoing and at the expense of the victim. If I simply forgive my offenders on a whim, or for no good reason, it seems I am sacrificing my own values too soon. I have opted against forgiveness, not because of a grudge or out of resentment, but because it would be going against my ethical belief that he is deserving of forgiveness. Thus, I choose to forget, but not in the traditional sense. Erasing someone from your, from your mind completely is practically impossible, but redefining someone is. Redefining someone's place in your life is possible, although not easy. While it's not traditional, I believe that, in a case such as this, it is possible to achieve peace and maintain my so-called moral perfection without forcefully giving an unworthy man.